two spindles out of this one, but anyway, you need to rough up your wood or put, like on the one I was using in the video, some nice flat edges with your knife going down. So it kind of hexagonal or that same idea going around this, just so it's not round because your rope will grip that a lot better if it is coarse going around there. If it's smooth, your rope's gonna slide around here and your, your bow drill is not working as efficient as it could be working. Another thing on your spindles, and I'll show you, say, this one that, this one here that hasn't had much done to it. Okay, so, Granted, I would be making it into two, but let's just say it was this size. So we've got our, our base pieces, our fat. I like my fat end down on my hearth board. That gives me more friction down here for creating those hot little embers. Your opposite end is my tapered down to the skinny. Now what I have found of doing bow drills over the years, doesn't matter whatever pillar pillar block you're using I like this metal SE it's less friction than a wood would be but you want to kind of carve these into a a dull pencil point shape because if you leave it flat and fat like this now you're creating friction up here as well as down on your hearth board and the issue with that is it's going to take twice the work to create your end product than if you would taper this down you have less friction up here more friction where you want that friction so I know that was probably a rambled jumbled mess but there's there's a lot of good info in there and it's not it's not info I just picked a book up and read from and decided to recite to you guys this is trials and errors I have personally went through over my years of doing this bushcraft stuff and I thought I would share some of those with you so that maybe some of you guys cannot make the same errors that I make and oh and it also in that first or the second video where I did the bow drill fire I wanted to talk with you guys I was telling you my my hearth board here is cottonwood and my spindles are from the yucca plant and I say in that video that it's about the best combination that you can have for a bow drill but I don't say why or explain any further on the subject um, now I will say in that video, it speaks for itself, because if you watch it, you can see how quick, I mean it's a matter of seconds by the time that starts building up smoke. So on your hearth boards, the reason cottonwood works the best is it had, it's got a high burning, it burns extremely hot, but, and well and it burns very fast too, but it it's a softer wood so I can create more sawdust quicker than you could say using a oak hearth board or you know a, a black locust hearth board or a Osage orange hearth board now they all work just some work better than others now on my spindle here this is it is wood, but it's not from a tree. It's from the yucca plant. I don't have any growing around where I'm at right now, but um, yucca plant, it's a wonderful plant. Many, many, many uses. But the reason these work so good, one, they all grow very straight. So they're good for you know, hand drill setups, bow drill setups. You can use these on a plow board. You know, it, 
they're wonderful. <clears throat> Second reason, they're very light. They don't take up a lot of weight, so you're not lugging extra poundage around with you. Third reason, they're very, very hard. And you, wouldn't, you wouldn't know these didn't come from a tree. Very stiff, very strong, but they're also very flexible, which is nice. Gives you some, some cushion, some leeway sometimes when you're using those. Now other, you know, other plants work just as well. I just prefer these because I don't burn this up as quick as I would say using, uh, these are Chinese elms behind me or some other woods. And I don't have to worry about rot. Jeez. You know, I can get these wet no big issue. Um, they're not going to rot and deteriorate like other plants and other woods. And most of your insects don't taste, don't like these. They don't think they taste very well. So, you know, you can leave these in your bug out spot at your campsite and they'll probably be there for a couple years. You can always replenish them, especially if these grow in your area. So, I think that is about all I had for you guys today. And we've got a storm blowing in. This wind's picking up a little bit more. So, I'm going to call the video here today. But I hope you guys enjoyed yourself and maybe learned a little bit. And good luck on those bush trips. Keep it wild, boys.